Welcome to Draw Studio. Today we're going to learn how to use measuring lines in two-point perspective. Let's get started. To understand how and when to use measuring lines, let's start with a rectangle in two-point perspective. Now let's assume that we want to divide this rectangle up in some sort of uneven way, like these four different sized and spaced boxes. We can use a ruler to find their size and spacing, which shows us the ratio of their pattern. The pattern of the ratio is 2, 1, 2, half, 1 and a half, 2, and 1. Now we need to apply this pattern to our box in perspective. From the bottom corner of our box, we will draw a horizontal line across our page. This is our measuring line. Then we divide the measuring line up in the same ratio of our reference boxes. In this example, our measuring line was the same length as our reference boxes but that won't always be the case. The line could have been half the size or twice as big. As long as we divide it up in the same ratio as our reference, it will work out the same. This means you can make the measuring line any size that is comfortable for your page. Next, we draw a new line from the end of our measuring line through the opposite corner of our box, all the way to the horizon line. This gives us a special vanishing point we call a measuring point. We then connect lines from our measuring point to all the divisions on our measuring line. When we do this, the lines will go through the front plane of our box. The points where those lines cross the bottom of the box plane is the measuring line applied into perspective. We can draw lines up from these points to the top of our box plane, and then make lines to our left vanishing point. We cut away the spaces to exactly recreate our reference in two-point perspective. The reason measuring lines work is because of the relationship of the viewer to the x, y, and z axis. In two-point perspective, the z axis travels in space, which means if an object moves on the z axis, it will appear to diminish in size as it goes in perspective away from the viewer. But the x axis is a horizontal line related to the viewer. If an object travels across the x axis, it is not moving in perspective, but on a parallel line to the horizon, so the object remains the same size. Because our measuring line was a horizontal x-axis, we could divide it up with a ruler outside of perspective to translate those measurements into perspective. The same is true for the y-axis. It is a vertical line perpendicular to the horizon, and an object moving up or down is not traveling in perspective, so the object remains the same size. This means we can also divide the y-axis with simple measurements. These principles will allow us to use the measuring line to create specific complex shapes in perspective. Let's put this complex shape accurately into perspective. We will put a box around the shape and then measure the bottom x-axis to find the ratio between each section that changes form. Because this is more complex than our previous box example, we also need to measure the front edge and see how it is divided on the y-axis. This gives me points where each section connects, and now we will apply these to our rectangle in two-point perspective. We make a measuring line on the bottom front of our box just like before, and divide it up in the same ratio as our reference shape. Then a line from the end of the measuring line through the far corner of the box to the horizon gives us the measuring point. From the measuring point, we draw lines back through the box to our measuring line. Now we have the horizontal divisions on our perspective box. We can divide the left edge of the box to get the vertical divisions. Then we mark those same points as our reference. And now we can connect the dots with a line that accurately gives us our reference shape. Next, we can build the thickness of our shape. We simply carry the corners of the front section to our vanishing points to find the other side. To find the middle section on the opposite side, we will first draw a perspective line from the peak to our left vanishing point, then a vertical line up to the top of the box, and carry that over to our left vanishing point too. This shows me the same point on the back plane of the box. By bringing a line down from that point, it will intersect the perspective line drawn through the peak, giving me the point of the peak 
on the back plane of the box. We basically inscribed an imaginary plane in perspective through the middle of our box to find those same points on the back plane. We will use this method again to find where this low point lands on the back plane of the box. Then we draw our last section across the top and from the back corner, connect the two points together to get the correct angle. And here we have it. An accurate, complex shape built from a reference and measuring lines. Try this for yourself. Draw a weird shape and profile, and then have fun putting it into perspective. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.